that's life That's what all the people say Riding high in April Shout down in May I'm gonna change that tune Every back on top, back on top of June Well, that's life And funny though it seems I know some people get a kick Stepping on the dream I'm not gonna let it get me down For this big old world If I go That's the way you have to go through life You have to do it your way That's a funny thing about life The grass always seems greener in somebody else's field But it's not There are still some people who think that show business Is all excitement and big money Well the only excitement I've ever experienced was the night that somebody rubbed algae pan and the stripper's G-string. As for the big money, well, every time that Yorkshire Television pay me, I take the cheque straight to the bank. I have to do, it's too small to go on its own. <laughs> we all have money problems. I want to see my bank manager last week. He hopped into his office, he had to do, I was kissing his feet at the time. <laughs> I said, how's my account, Stan? He said, I'll toss you for it. <laughs> we sat down in his office. He said, before I can discuss a monetary loan, he said, I must ask you, have you got collateral? I said, no, it's the way my legs are crossed. <laughs> he said, you've been coming to this branch now for over seven years, and in all that time, you've asked me for money. You've never noticed I've got a glass eye. I said, it's your left one. He said, how do you know? I said, it's the only one with a spark of humanity in it. <laughs> Everybody's life is full of ups and downs. There have been times when I've teetered on the very abyss. Total despair. <laughs> times when it seemed that the, the gods had cast the dice of fate against me. I've not had a happy life. My childhood was a singularly unhappy one. The trouble was, my mother was short-sighted. And she would persist in keep putting talcum powder on my face. <laughs> she and you and I have often shuddered to think what she did with my dummy. <laughs> she used to look at me and say, I don't know what to make of our son. My father used to say, the thought of a rug. <laughs> oh, I know they didn't like me. Little things like when I was christened, the vicar threw my father out for throwing piranha fish in the font. <laughs> we lived in a tough district. It was so tough I got mugged one night by a nun. <laughs> when I grew up I thought things would alter, but it didn't. After ten years of married bliss, my dear wife ran away with a fellow next door. Who would I did miss him? <laughs> Of course, it was a marriage that was doomed from the start. I met the wife in a travel agency. She was looking for a holiday and I was the last resort. <laughs> she was hell of a size. She was so fat when she walked down the aisle on a wedding day in white, everybody thought they were towing a sight screen to Lord's. <laughs> she was so fat when she bent down in Liverpool, they had an eclipse in Bournemouth. <laughs> she never wore horse and she used bailing wire. <laughs> the day I married that woman, I had no luck. She joined Women's Lib and when she burned her brown, it took three months to put the fire out. <laughs> nothing went right. Absolutely nothing. I backed a horse in the Grand National and it fell in the paddock. <laughs> I bought some bananas when I peeled them, they were empty. <laughs> I just couldn't win. I fought a duel and came third. <laughs> and I was offered a big part in the revival of the musical The King and I with Dame Flora Robson. <laughs> That's a cancel it, she wouldn't have her head shaved. <laughs> Only had one suit. It was so old every time a band played the Lancer, the trouser broke into a gallop. <laughs> and then when all seemed lost, from the gin-soaked lips of a pockmarked Lasker, <laughs> who's counting his legs in the bath, came the words that set me on the right course. 
Go ye to Tibet and seek out the old wise one. I got a job on a ship as a carpenter. For the first time I'd been in the chips for years. <laughs> Off we sailed on a perilous journey. What a voyage. It was scurvy, mutiny, disease, but eventually we reached Nutsford. <laughs> Three years later, we, we docked at Kowloon and I trekked across the hinterland of China in my saffron robes and my begging bowl. <laughs> Got a wool was over there and they're quite cheap. <laughs> it stops as well, which is handy. What a journey, what a voyage, what a perilous trek. As I began to climb the Himalayas, the wind tugged at my clothing, ice particles formed on my eyelids, and near the Indian border, I got frostbite up the Khyber. <laughs> and yet, as I rounded the scree, there, on a cold, damp ledge, sat the old wise one. The swirling snow, throwing in bold relief the monastery. His cowled features were hidden, but his hands were like withered leaves. I said, oh, wise one, I who have traveled far, what is the secret of life? And his voice was hoarse, like a thousand winds broken on rocks. My son, he said, I have sat on this cold, damp ledge for a hundred years. I said, what have you got from it, oh wise one? <laughs> he said, I've got peace, tranquility. I said, wisdom, he said, no, pile. <laughs> I said, I who have traveled far, oh weary wayfarer, tell me, oh great and wise one, what is the true majesty of life? What is the secret that one must find? Where are you the oracle? I beseeched him. He said, the secret, my son, is know no enemies, have only friends. His soft, gentle voice carried on the wind. I said, it's very difficult in the modern world. You make enemies. How did you avoid it? He said, I have lived for 200 years, and I have no enemies. I said, how did you manage that? He said, I shot the bloody lot. <laughs>